Released back in 1967, Sgt. Pepper is arguably one of the most influential albums ever recorded. Its U.S. stereo release was mastered for CD for the first time back in 1987, 20 years from its initial release. So back then, you could literally say it was 20 years ago today. It was mastered again in 2009, along with the rest of the U.S. stereo mixes, but also, for the first time, the U.K. mono mixes were mastered for CD as well. While Sgt. Pepper has been mastered for CD twice now, it has never been remixed before. In 2017, Giles Martin, son of the now legendary producer George Martin, who produced all but one of the Beatles albums, was given the task of remixing the album for its 50th anniversary. There are sometimes subtle and radical differences between the stereo U.S. mixes and the U.K. mono mixes of the Beatles albums. The Beatles themselves have always preferred the mono mix of Sgt. Pepper, and John Lennon even once said that you haven't heard Sgt. Pepper till you've heard it in mono. So for his guide, Giles Martin used the mono version as his template for creating this new 50th anniversary stereo remix. In many ways, he has shown us what the 1967 mono mix would have sounded like had it been adhered to for its stereo version. But he has also taken elements that were unique to the stereo US mix and combined them into this new remix as well, thus giving fans the best of both worlds. The 2017 stereo remix was released on CD and vinyl simultaneously. Response to the remix has been mostly positive from fans and music critics. I initially experienced the 50th anniversary remix on CD when I purchased the Super Deluxe six disc set and reviewed it on this channel. I was mostly positive in my review also, but a number of YouTube commenters told me that I really needed to hear the vinyl version. So I broke down and I bought the vinyl version as well. So what do I think? Well, first of all, one of my few negative comments on the CD version was that the lead guitar played on the title track of the song's opening would sometimes sound a bit harsh to my ears. One commenter misunderstood this remark and responded by telling me that it's an aggressive, overdriven guitar line and that it's meant to sound that way. I'm a guitarist and I do know a thing or two about using overdrive and distortion to get an aggressive guitar tone. And that's not what I'm talking about. I am talking about pushing the audio signal into the red zone, where the sound distorts and becomes unpleasant and even painful to hear. This is not the good kind of distortion. I'm happy to state that none of this was present on the new vinyl version. The solo hasn't lost any of its aggressiveness, but it no longer feels like it's driving into the red zone, and it feels like it's sitting back in the mix where it was originally placed. I also read a number of comments from viewers that the new stereo remix is brick walled on the CD version. So let's do a comparison of some audio files. Now here is the 2009 mono mix remaster for CD. Here is the 2009 stereo mix remaster for CD. Notice the difference. Now here is the 2017 stereo mix for CD. The 2017 version is clearly pushing to the top of its audio limits on CD. Now, in spite of this, I'm mostly happy with the CD version of the 50th anniversary release, and my remarks about the opening song's guitar solo notwithstanding, I mostly enjoy it. Until, of course, I compared it to the vinyl version. There are two ways that I primarily listen at home and in the car. When I'm listening in the car, I am playing digital files from my phone via my car's Bluetooth system. In the car, the CD version sounds just fine and I enjoy it. But in a back-to-back -back comparison to the digitization of my vinyl version, I notice that the CD version sounds just a little bit colder. True, the vinyl version is quieter, but I can always turn it up a bit. 
But if you do not own the vinyl version, you are probably going to be just fine with that CD version. I also tried this same car test using the actual official CD release and a full quality WAV file burning of my digital import of the vinyl version to CDR. I got the same result. When I'm at home, however, there's no contest. The vinyl version sounds better hands down. It may be a bit quieter than its CD counterpart, but it's warmer and richer sounding, and I experience no ear fatigue at all. In my initial video review of this new remix, I mentioned my concern that there might be just a little bit too much fidelity. One of the amazing things about this new stereo remix is that you can hear things you may have never heard before. Everything just pops out with such an amazing sense of crystal clarity. This is great at first, but I wondered if this might be too much of a good thing. You see, when a song is mixed, there are some tracks that sit more in the forefront and some that sit further back. And some tracks are just textures that are meant to be felt more than they are heard. As an example, in a movie there are starring roles and there are bit roles. The starring roles carry the story and the bit roles help to support the story, but they all contribute to the overall tone and mood of the story. I think the same applies to music when it comes to its individual tracks. Some tracks are meant to be more in the front, some tracks are meant to be more in the back, some more in the middle, and some are just creating mood and tone. In preparation for recording the orchestral buildup for A Day in the Life, initially a piano was recorded thumping out an E note on the bass with some ascending piano notes on the treble, and recording engineer Jeff Emmerich recorded a count-off as the guide for the orchestra. You can, of course, Hear this in its entirety on the session tracks. And you can also hear this at the opening of the finished version. But as the orchestra instruments start to come in, it melts further and further and further into the background as the orchestra begins to take center stage and builds to its crescendo. But on the 50th anniversary, I could hear all of this as clearly as I can hear anything else. In fact, you can hear each orchestral instrument with absolute clarity. I really do feel that this part loses some of its mind-bending psychedelic edge when all of its individual elements can be heard with such stark clarity versus them sounding more blended together like they do in the 2009 release. When I listen to the orchestral buildup of A Day in the Life, on the vinyl counterpart of this new stereo remix, I do get a lot of improved audio clarity, but everything feels more properly blended. All the orchestral elements, all the elements that I've just described to you, they all feel like the its respective tracks are taking their proper place in the mix. Just like in film, there are starring roles and there are bit players, but they all contribute to the overall and final performance. So what's the verdict? Well, as far as audio quality is concerned, for me, the new 50th anniversary remix of Sgt. Pepper, vinyl, is the winner. Now with all of this hyperbole out of the way, I want to say that this video is not a put down on the CD release version. If you own the CD and you don't own a good turntable, you're going to be just fine. But if you ever do get a good turntable, and I mean, in other words, not a cheap Crosley turntable, you definitely owe it to yourself to pick this one up on vinyl. Wait, don't go away. I'm not done yet. Do I have any complaints? Yes, I certainly do. This vinyl release was done as a two record set. The first record is of course the album in its entirety. The second record are the session tracks. This two record set is trying to replicate the two CD deluxe version, which contains, of course, one CD of the album and the second CD of the session tracks. However, the main difference is that with the CD version, along with the session tracks for the album, you also get 
early session versions of Strawberry Fields Forever and Penny Lane, along with the final finished uh, recent remixes by Giles Martin. You don't get that with the vinyl version. And I, I, I believe the reason why is be simply because you can't fit it all on a vinyl record without losing audio quality. If you are a vinyl enthusiast, the reason you're picking this up is for the audio quality that you get when you listen to a record on a quality turntable and when you know you're purchasing a quality mastering and pressing on vinyl, which this is. I don't believe you're buying this to get those session tracks, especially when you can't get all the session tracks without buying the two CD deluxe version. I really do think they should have just done this as a single vinyl release and charged less for it than do it as a two vinyl release and charge more. Right now, there are a lot of cynics out there that want to say, well, it's all about the money, it's all about greed. I don't think that's the case. I just think it was the wrong decision. I think they thought that they should try to go ahead and replicate the CD two disc version and give the people who bought the vinyl uh, the session tracks. But if you can't give us all the session tracks on vinyl, don't give us any of them. Just sell us a single vinyl release for less. And then if we really want those session tracks, we'll pick up the two CD release. And of course, if we want more, we're going to pick up the Super Deluxe Edition. That's my only complaint. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. This was my first CD versus vinyl episode. Hope you like this. Please leave a comment. And if you do like it, please click like. Please share the video with your friends on social media. And I'm hoping I can do more CD versus vinyl videos. Bye. Hey everybody, I did a couple passes on that guitar demonstration I did earlier in the video. I thought I'd include two of the outtakes. Hope you enjoy them. Bye.